Hello there, my name's Dr. Agim Heimer. Um, these are my details. So there's our website address, there's our work practice address, our work phone number, and there's my email address as well. So that if you've got any questions, you, you can just email them. I'll just talk a little bit about myself first. I graduated from Melbourne University in 1988. I've worked in country Victoria. I worked in Mildura for nearly five years. I've worked in various different practices around Melbourne. I've worked overseas as well in the London Hospital, England Private Hospital. I also should put down there that I've worked in the Philippines. I've been a senior lecturer for progressive orthodontics for the past eight years. I lecture in various topics. So I lecture in orthodontics. I lecture in diode lasers in dentistry, that's for soft tissues, and I've been a lecturer in TMD and, and Botox for about four or five years as well for progressive seminars. This is what our practice looks like on the corner of Keeler Road and Bradshaw Street in Essendon. So I suppose the reason that you're listening to this is because you want to know about TMD, which is temporomandibular disorders. So let's talk about that. I've been lecturing on this topic for approximately 20 years. As, as I said previously, I lecture on a lot of topics. This topic has been my, my pet topic for ever since I graduated from dental school, trying to work out what actually is going on. Some people, some practitioners say it's like witchcraft. I've given lectures to various medical groups and that's what's been said to me. Um, I can see what they're, they're saying. It's, it's a very complicated and, and difficult topic. I think 20 years ago there really wasn't much that we knew about it and it's TMD is like the topic, the heading put on to um, a person's problems when nobody else can work out why that person is having facial pain. So if that nobody can work it out they go well it must be TMD. So then people come and see me and then I've got to work out okay what aspect of TMD actually is it that's causing your problem. I truly believe that nobody is an expert on this topic. I think if somebody says that they're an expert and you only need to see me, I think that can be dangerous. And you'll see in the next couple of slides that you, you need a team approach. You need to be able to use a lot of different people with, within different professions because your problem may not be specific to just the, the one profession. So this is my team. When you come and see me, I've got all these people on my team and my job and also any of these people, when you say go and see the audiologist because your ears are ringing, well, the audiologist should have a look and do everything that they could possibly do and then go, okay, I've looked at everything, but I'm going to refer you to this person because I believe the, the next person for you to go and see on, their, on your journey. So when someone comes to see me, I have a listen as to who you've been to see before. I like to get all the reports and have a read of them. And then I work out what I can do for you. But then I see who else within my team can I refer you to, to try and investigate what's going on. Because it is, it's such a, a difficult topic. So, what, unfortunately as a patient, you can't just go to one, one dentist or one chiropractor or one physio or one ENT. You've really got to sit there yourself and have a listen to the person and see if you like the personality of that professional that you're dealing with. And do you trust them? Do you trust what they're saying? And that really is up to the patient to, to work that out. There is no problems with getting second opinions or going to see somebody else because you need to be comfortable and you need to trust the person that you are 
you are dealing with because as a practitioner we're all different no dentist is is the same so so maybe you do shop around a little bit and I think that's okay until you find somebody that you're comfortable and that you trust my opinion is that if you're seeing someone for a lengthy period of time and not getting results then maybe that treatment isn't the correct one I see many patients who have been seeing a chiropractor or a physio and they've been seeing them twice a week for months and months and really not getting any results so I, I believe that if you're not getting any results after one or two attempts or sometimes say for the the muscle problem seeing like a myotherapist or a chiropractor you may have to go for a few weeks to see if you get any results but after that period of time if nothing's of benefit to you I would suggest to just stop what you're doing otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of money on something that probably isn't the treatment for you and also there's a lot of patients who I've seen who've been medicated and the medication isn't actually working either so the dose dosage is increased and then it's increased again to the point where the person can't function or go to work so if the medication isn't working and you're having to continually up the dose then my suggestion again would be to stop the medication and ask for a referral to somebody else or seek a, a second opinion and that's why the team approach is so important because the person you are seeing should have a ref have a, a team member to refer you to if their team treatment isn't working just don't continue doing what you're doing and so unfortunately there, there can be no guarantees it's like anything in medicine you just you can't guarantee it you just um, try something you try it for a short period of time and if it's working excellent if it's not working then the practitioner needs to think okay what is another step so due to the difficulty of treating TMD in some patients treatment can be what we call diagnostic like I will sometimes make people an occlusal splint an occlusal splint will not stop your grinding and clenching because that's just a habit and you will still do it but what it does do is it protects your teeth but it also makes the, fo your, the force your muscles are applying is a lot less because you might still be grinding and clenching but because you've got a splint in place and your teeth are apart your muscles are not as strong and it's the same with Botox we'll do Botox and see if it works but if it doesn't work well there's no point doing it again so that's why it's what we call a diagnostic let's try something let's see if it works if it works then excellent if it doesn't work well then we've ruled it out and that's why unfortunately in these kind of problems the cost cannot add up and that's why I prefer the simple steps and then slowly progress from there because if the simple steps work well that that's excellent before we start trying more expensive things but I'll be talking more and more on that topic as we continue on I've put this slide at the very beginning of this conversation because stress is a major factor is it that 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 the person who suffers from TMD isn't um, is someone who doesn't deal with stress well or is it that the team D is causing the stress or is it a bit of both but I find that stress is always present when treating team D patients and it is hard to tell if the stress was there first helping to create the condition or is the stress a part of the condition and came due to the pain and suffering that is being experienced so regardless of which one the stress must be managed and there are tools for managing stress there's exercise diet meditation yoga are just a few of the tools on dealing with stress some people's psychological help is required it, it's really nice I think it's a, a problem still in our society that people believe that going to see a psychologist is a problem 
I, I think a psychologist is no different to a personal trainer for your fitness. A psychologist is just like a personal trainer for how you're thinking and how your brain works. So I, I, I think it would be great if the stigma can be removed away from seeing a psychologist because really they should just be a normal part of, of our society. A lot of the tools that, that we need to deal with stress, I know personally that my parents, um, they never taught me any of the tools. I wasn't sitting there with my father and meditating or yoga, that did not happen. So I had to go out there and learn how to deal with stress myself and also seek help on how to deal with it. There are different types of pain in TMD. There's um, pain odontalgia which is it's coming from your teeth and then there's pain where it's coming from your joints and then there's pain where it's coming it's a muscular origin and then we've got headaches and that's broken up into the TMD migraine kind of headaches as well so there are a lot of different areas within our faces that can be causing the problem and it could be one of these or it could be several of these that are, are the, the issue. So this is the difficulty with TMD, like from the last slide, you need to work out which structure is causing the pain. Is it a tooth problem? Is it a joint problem? So is it the joint that's the problem? This is the head of the, the lower jaw as it connects to the the, the skull, the rest of the base of the skull, and there's a little disc in there. So is this the problem, or is it tooth decay that's the problem, or is it something else that's a lot more sinister within the brain? And not one person deals with all of this, so you need to work out who, the, who you need to be sent to, to, to deal with the problem. I see many times patients who have done, who have been to their GP, they've been to their ear, nose and throat specialist, they've been to the neurologist, the physio, the chiropractor, etc. And there has been no resolution to their problem. Sometimes this can be really good that you have seen these different people, like a lot of the times the ENT and the neurologist would have re referred you off for MRIs or CAT scans. So it is nice to have ruled out those problems and that they're not part of the issue. So then when you come and see me, I can then move further along the chain of working out what the problem is. We don't have to go backwards and redo the ENT and the new neurologist. So, so yeah, so a lot of people have spent a lot of time dealing, trying to work out what their issue is. And then we've got to work out what test is it that we want to order. There's so many different x-rays and scans and MRIs and, and um, it's, it's, it really is endless as to the approach and what we need to, to look for. So that's why you can see where people may have called it a, a bit of um, witchcraft. As you've gone along on your journey trying to work out what your pain is um, you've normally got a very long story and you've got a lot of results and you've got a lot of reports from different specialists and reports from the radiologist on the on the MRI so it's excellent to make sure that you collect all the information that it's been collated on you and make sure to keep a record of all the treatments performed and date them as well and make sure you get a record of all the reports by various people. Like when you have an MRI taken, the MRI is given back to the doctor who ordered the MRI, but with that MRI is also a report by the radiologist. And that report is the most important part of the MRI. Sometimes I've read the report and I realise that the radiologist only reported on the facial structures that the ENT wanted to hear about. 
So then I've read the report and then I've gone back to the radiologist and said, thank you very much for your information, but can you please now report on the temporomandibular joint? Because within that MRI, that joint was actually also x-rayed. So I want to know, um, I want the radiologist to now report on another aspect of that x-ray that was taken and that saves more x-rays being taken. So whenever a patient comes in to see me, I'll sit down and write down the whole story and document it. And sometimes it is a very, very long story over many years. And we start from the very, very beginning as to when you first noticed your pain. Normally it's a very long story with lots of different people involved and it's over a lengthy period of time. The best thing to do is to come in with you having written everything down already. I personally like it when people email or mail it to me before the visit. So then the time isn't taken up with just writing this down. We just spend time finessing the story. So if you can write down in an order of every, everything that you've experienced, like the severity of the pain, the people that you've seen, when it all started, was it just on the right, was it on the left hand side, how has this pain progressed, what happened when you went to the ENT, what happened when you were medicated, all those different pieces are very, very important in trying to work out what the next step is because we don't want to go back and redo something again. And if you can write that all down, then then I can have a, a read of it before you even come in. So then we can spend the time that's been allocated to you um, working out other things. So these are my details again. That's part one of, of this conversation. There's many more parts to come because this is a, a, a complicated topic. I'll, I'll just try to keep it within the 10, 15 minute mark. And so that's just easy listening. You don't have to spend too much time and listen to everything. So the next part, we'll get it on the website as quickly as we can.